It's about the process and not necessarily the result because the result comes with having a good mindset about the process and not necessarily jumping straight to the result. George, welcome back to the MCAT podcast. How you doing, my friend? Good, good. Pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me back. I'm excited to chat with you and talk about something. I think it, it as we come out of this post-COVID world or come out of this oh, yeah. COVID world, I, I don't know if we can say we're we're post-COVID yet. It's still out Get there. Me. It's always going to be there. Um, yeah. MCAT prep and a post-COVID world, MCAT prep with classes coming back in person and that whole transition from online to in person and mm. and just what does that world look like for students now um, helping students understand especially some of these students maybe took some of these really strong uh, or not strong these important prereqs uh, yeah. for the MCAT in an online environment maybe they didn't excel in that online environment and, and maybe some thoughts on what they should do and all, all of that fun stuff related to to COVID and, and these, these transitions that students are going through. What does that sound yeah, like? Yeah. Sound good? For sure. I think, yeah, no, that's great. I, I think first and foremost, I really empathize with a lot of students who went through the COVID era because I remember it was on the tail end for me. I think I took my last year, my fourth year undergrad in like prime COVID era, uh, era where we had the online courses. We had a lot of online assignments. We didn't really see anyone in person. Like, it's challenging both mentally and academically in the sense that it's a different challenge, right? It's like you feel a little bit more burnt out. You have the Zoom fatigue. There's a lot going on where it's just learning isn't nearly as much fun, right? You don't see your friends. You don't get to go out. It's not an activity. It's like you log on, you're staring at a screen for eight hours a day. And then you're right. Like for the longest time, I think it's been it's been quite funny that all these institutions and universities are like, no, like the quality of education that you get at university, you obviously can't get online. Like you have to come in person. This is why you pay the tuition. This is why you, and then COVID it's like, it's all online. You're basically <laughs> learning from YouTube and it's like, well, here we are anyways, same yeah. tuition, right? So I really, really empathize with a lot of those students because I took the tail end of it where it's like, you know, fourth, third year, it's, it's not as general anymore it's pretty specialized you're choosing things that you might be interested in already and it's like you're at the tail end you've already finished most of the work i did remember first and second year a lot of these mcat testable classes the general chemistry the organic chemistry the biologies those are really 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 challenging and i can't imagine like the additional challenges layered on where it's like you don't really have a live instructor to really help you walk you through certain things you're watching videos is it clear is it not clear the assignments are they clear are they not clear and i even remember like taing sometimes where the marking schemes aren't always there to test your understanding. It's there as a standardized measure of like filling in check boxes of can we get the quick points? Can we make sure that the student like fills certain understandings like, OK, but does it fully demonstrate a comprehension? Does it fully demonstrate like an ability to appreciate a topic? Not necessarily. And so um, I definitely want to begin by saying that it's been challenging for a lot of students in that post COVID area, especially coming through to MCAT, where a lot of these classes are important as a foundation, uh, making that transition over. Yeah. So as a student begins their MCAT prep and they go, mm -hmm. okay, my Gen Chem, uh, my organic chem was during COVID online. And I don't think I retained as much as all of the other classes that I took in person. What do you recommend for that student? Should they go back and take an in-person class? Should they just really, um, really study hard? It's, it's it's interesting because if the answer is just go and do a blueprint blueprint course and and do the online modules, well, that's online again, and and does that yeah. really help them? So it's it's an interesting situation these students are in. Absolutely. So the good news is that at the very core of it, there's always students who like, you can think of the non-traditional students, maybe the students who had an arts background or the people who went through another pathway and decided to switch into medicine like a last second and they go through the prep materials and they go through the courses and they still get into medicine very successfully. So it's possible, even if there's less of a foundation with let's say your coursework in undergrad, I think it's really encouraging to learn from examples like exemplary students who didn't have that foundation to begin with and they still found a way to make it work. So there is a method to the madness. The good news is there's a method to the madness. Um, I remember as well trying to choose my own prep materials and as someone who had a decent foundation, you know, I went to my classes, I performed decently in my classes. And even then I was a little overwhelmed with how to pick my resources. A lot of it comes down to your own unique learning style, right? If you know that you didn't have a very strong foundation, you now think, okay, well, what should I do? Should I get prep materials? Should I try to see what's free online? 
my recommendation, and this is genuinely like, I know like I'm a teacher for um, uh, Blueprint as well. And like, yes, we have a live course. It's a lot of fun. But my genuine opinion is that if you're prepping for the MCAT, you should go with some kind of prep resource because there's so much on the MCAT. It's, it's, it's overwhelming to figure out what is testable and what isn't because the MCAT is broad but it tends to be very shallow. You test a lot of topics, but at a superficial level. And so when it comes to prepping tips, it's like, okay, well, if you know you learn better independently, you really value efficiency and you can read quickly, maybe something like textbooks and practice exams, those would be really useful for you. But if you know you thrive in an environment where having a community matters, having that kind of inside joke and having a live person, not just a screen recording and like people explaining things and animations and things like that to engage your learning, you know you need that. This isn't any dig at your character or your academic ability it's simply just saying, well, what do you really learn best with? And then finding that best path, then maybe something like a prep course would be better for you or an online uh, live course where you have an instructor explaining things. There's office hours, there's abilities to ask questions. Having that additional resource might be what you need to, to get you there. So when you when you look at a student, again, who is coming out of this COVID world, they, they took mm. their classes potentially uh, online, these really core classes, and they go they go and they study. And, and they do a prep course and they still mm. feel like there, there's something missing yeah. where, how much do you think we can say, oh, it's because you took it online and, and you, you learned for your tests and you didn't retain much, but when you went mm. in person in class, maybe there was an attendance policy, whatever, what, what, what have you, um, again, where, um, if, if an online course still is not picking up that slack for the student mm. to really help mm. fill those gaps, mm. what's, what's next? Is it a tutor? A again, is it going back and just finding a local community college to go, let me just go back to the basics. Although right. you did say, right, the MCAT, uh, a common saying we have here on the podcast, it's a mile wide and an inch deep. Mm -hmm. And courses typically go the opposite direction where they, they go, go way further, in, way depth, further yeah. in depth. And it's like, well, do you really need a course? I, I'm just really trying to be the student here and go, what is mm -hmm. best for me right now? Right. It varies student by student. And there is definitely no universal strategy of if this doesn't work, try this. If this doesn't work, try this. Because all of our learning styles are different. The way we approach things can be different. And fundamentally, it comes down a lot to a mindset, right? And I really encourage your listeners at home, no matter where you are in your prep journey, there's always something that you can do, right? Even with, let's say, the live courses. Yes, there's videos online. You're watching the videos. Really reflect on it and think, okay, well, am I actively engaging in it? Or am I just watching the videos and putting at 2x speed and I'm going through it? And it's like, this is not a blame game. It's just genuinely like, did we get the most of the materials that we had at our disposal? Did we give it our efforts? Did we stay engaged? Or is it like we're getting through the videos for the sake of getting through videos? Because this comes down a lot to active versus passive learning, right? We can watch something a million times. We can read something a million times, but that doesn't mean it sticks. Your eyes glaze over it. You look at the details. You're like, cool, that makes sense. Hindsight bias, everything in hindsight is 2020. It's like, that's so simple. Yeah, that makes sense. But we've all been there in the sense that we watch a video or we read about a concept and then we try a question and then we get the question wrong. And we feel a sense of frustration of, well, I just saw this. Why don't I understand this? Learning is not a linear process. It's not about, hey, like you're just going to get incrementally better and you're going to see progress every day and you're always going to get all your questions right. Nobody in the history of never ever has gone through that. It's about seeing something for the first time, trying to engage in it, saying it out loud, trying to recall it, maybe writing down some key equations. So actively pulling the information back so it sticks and then applying it and then also expecting that in questions, it is your duty to make mistakes. It's not that it's okay to make mistakes. It's your duty to make mistakes because of this concept, you're going to notice that there's certain areas that didn't quite click. And when you start to tackle each area of like, okay, you know what? I did understand this, but these new little facts I didn't totally understand yet. These new little strategies I didn't totally Totally understand yet then you think okay well do i go back and watch that part of the video again do i maybe read the thing on the textbook do i go to an office hours and ask questions to clarify the live course we have a live discord as well where anytime you can type a question in the chat content specific like whether it's physics biochemistry anything it's like hey like here's a screenshot of the question here's my understanding i got this question wrong this is my logic like where did i go wrong and someone comes in and explains it for you so Having that a bit, uh, additional layer of support can be super, super helpful. And of course, it, it depends on how much support you need, right? So for that student who's sitting at home, maybe thinking certain things didn't work for me, that's okay. Certain, Not everything works for everyone. And it's like, do you need a tutor? Well, that's something you have to decide for yourself. A tutor isn't the answer for everyone. It's just a matter of even before you get a tutor, think, well, 
where are the gaps that I have right now? Is it that I need some extra explanation or do I just need to revisit some topics? Do I just need to look at it from a way where I start recalling things and not just rereading things? Do is it is it a matter of being more active with my learning as opposed to passive with my learning? Is it a matter of I'm getting burnt out with three hour study blocks and I just need to break up my three hour study blocks into maybe one hour, one hour, one hour can maintain focus? Is it a matter of taking those five to 10 minute chunks and doing a little bit of anything that'll move you towards that move the needle towards where you need to go, right? Like a little bit of flashcards, writing out a few equations, trying to remember that one concept that didn't really stick and telling yourself a story, explaining to your friend Becky, whatever that story may be, right? So taking advantage of those little bits of time. So there's always things that you can do. You are more capable than you think. I know it's really frustrating when we don't see that result straight away, but it's about the process and not necessarily the result because the result comes with having a good mindset about the process and not necessarily jumping straight to the result. I love that. I love that. Definitely. Um, post COVID world, uh, what yeah. else do you think a student uh, as they're transitioning from their, their COVID world to post COVID world, MCAT prep wise, anything else big that you think is important for them to keep in mind or, or strategies to help them with transitions? I think the biggest thing, and I see this in students all the time, and I reflect on even myself, like sometimes even med school, COVID med school has been tough in times because you lose some of the passion you had for learning. Like I think a lot of our a lot of pre-med students, it's like at a core level, you love science, you're interested in it, whether you're doing research, you're just learning about it, you watch like YouTube videos, and it just explains a cool concept. It's like, wow, this is how things work. This is how gene pathways work. This is how you go from like DNA letters to a protein to a therapeutic to a pharmaceutical to like making insulin and all this. It's like, it's really cool stuff. And I think it gets frustrating because when we start to have the Zoom fatigue, when we start to get tired of watching videos, when we start to see like the same mundane lectures over and over and over, we lose that passion for learning. And that's really frustrating sometimes because I do hear from students of like, you know, I'm just tired, I'm exhausted, I'm burnt out. And so finding ways to make learning fun again, as in look at it of just science is number one cool. Can I gamify it? Can I quiz myself? Can I create some sort of scoring system? Can I reward myself? Find ways to make learning fun again, whether this is learning with your friends or or again, having some sort of like token economy for yourself where when you get a certain number of questions or a certain number of practice things in, you'll go out and reward yourself by going to play beach volleyball. You'll go out to reward yourself by going out with your friends, right? MCAT studying can be really lonely and studying in general can be really lonely of like, oh, I need to duck my head and get it done. But when the Zoom fatigue adds up, when the lecture fatigue adds up, find ways to make learning fun again, because learning is fun. Science is cool. And when you find that passion, it takes away from just, oh, I'm studying this because I need to take an exam. And it's, I'm studying this because I have to do this to get to med school. It's like, I'm studying this because this is kind of cool. And I can draw a little pathway and I can visualize it in my mind. I can see a little movie of the proteins moving together and whatnot. It's like, it's cool when it works. It's cool when it makes sense mm -hmm. and really work hard to keep your head high and make sure you get there because it's worth it in the end. Yeah, I, I often talk to students who make the mistake, I, th I think, of just going 100% into MCAT prep, and they stop yeah. shadowing, they stop doing their clinical experience, they stop doing their volunteering. And, Everything. And, and, and they get burnt out. <laughs> and, and I talk to them, I'm like, when's the last time you actually like, reminded yourself why you're why you're doing this like being in a hospital setting being around patients and they're like uh, mm -hmm. it's been two months since i started mcat prep i'm like go do that and then they they figure out a way to go do it and then i talk mm -hmm. to them they're like oh my gosh that's exactly what i needed right i needed to remind myself my why and yeah. it makes a huge difference and even just getting progress done of any kind, like getting something done feels good. I reflect on the days where sometimes like I remember first year university, even first year med school, there were times where I was like, you know, I need to focus on my study. So I cut more of my extracurriculars. I cut more of these other things out because I'm like, I need to make sure I do well and like establish my foundation or whatnot. I don't know about people at home, but I always find that having more time can sometimes be a curse and not so much a blessing because mm -hmm. the way my brain works is that I know if I'm like, I have a lecture at four. I'm going to go up, play volleyball at seven. I have all this. It's like, I have less time to lallygag with, you know, I have less time to fool around with. It's like, I need to get these things done. I need to watch this lecture. I need to get my notes done here. I need to check, 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 check. Whereas it's like, I have a full day and I'll, I'll study at some point. Yeah. Right? And then I end up, I scroll and I'm like, oh, I have time. Like it's par just go Parkinson's principle. Do you know Parkinson's principle? I actually don't know that principle, yeah, but so is that what the effect is called? That That is Parkinson's principle, yeah. That the okay. amount of time that it takes to do the work will fill the amount of time that you have to do the work. Hmm. And so when you set boundaries, when you're like, this is the time that I have to study because I have all these hmm. other engagements, you hmm. get it done. 
And then when yeah. you're like, ah, I don't really have anything today, so I'll just study. And then it takes all day to do the same amount of work that it really you could have done in two hours. Exactly. And then that's so discouraging because you reflect on it. You're like, wow, I was distracted. Wow, I was scrolling. And then you feel bad. And the guilt is a new mental block that <laughs> shame and guilt. you further. Oh, yeah. The shame and the guilt, right? Versus it's like, hey, I went out. I saw my friends. I called my parents. You know, I went out, played beach volleyball. I did all the things. I watched that show I've been meaning to. And I got my two modules done. And I read two chapters. And I... You feel great about it after. Like, yeah, you're going to go to bed tired, but you're going to go to bed tired in a good way. Not a mental exhaustion of I feel guilty and I feel shameful. It's like progress leads to more confidence. More confidence leads to more progress. Use that momentum. Build smaller goals in the beginning to get an idea of, okay, I can do it. Add a little bit more. Add something on top of it. Build a really good schedule where it's like, this is my work time. This is my play time. And they don't mix. And you'll find that you are, it's like a superpower. Like once you start getting things done, once you're getting in a rhythm, it really is a superpower. Yeah. And it is Parkinson's law, not Parkinson's principle. My, my apologies. Yeah. Uh, good to know. Good to but know. yeah, that, that's a good one to, uh, to know about. I, I wonder if it's the same Parkinson, uh, that, uh, maybe came, came up. I was with. just looking at the condition. Yeah. yeah and whatnot, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. okay. Slow it down and stuff. Yeah. Anything, anything else we need to know about in this post COVID world? It's tough. Like there's hope. That's the main message I want to leave. Like there's hope. I know it's, it's so frustrating because we can think of all the ways that we've been wronged by this world and the society. And like, yes, COVID, it was frustrating. Yes, we were isolated. Yes, our classes were online. Is it fair? That's debatable. But what can we do next? There's always something you can do next. You're way more capable than you think. Always think of your next step. You don't need to plan out your entire future step by step. But as long as you can see your next step, you will move in the right direction and you will get to where you need to go.